9.1.1 write down the coordinates of a so let's take a look at the quicken statement and see what is going on so the graphs of g prime of x is equal to a x squared plus b x plus c and then h of x is equal to 2x minus 4 they are sketched below right uh, the graph of g prime of x is the derivative of a cubic function g that should be quite easy to see and then we're given some bullet points the graphs of f uh, the graphs of h and g prime have a common y intercept at e right there and then c and d are the x intercepts of g prime so c and d are the x intercepts point a is the x intercept of h right here and then point b is the turning point of g prime which is right there line a b is parallel to the y axis okay so back to the question 9.1.1 write down the coordinates of e so what is special with regards to e the first bullet point the graphs of h and g prime have a common y intercept at e so e is the y intercept of h and is the y intercept of g prime but in g prime we have too many unknown variables we have a and we have b and we have c that are unknown but in h of x everything is unknown so it would be easier to use h of x to find the coordinates of e so we'll see that y intercept x is equals to zero so we say h of zero is equals to two multiplied by zero minus four so two multiplied by zero that is zero you subtract four you get minus four so the coordinates of e x is zero y is minus four that is 9.1.1 let's take a look at 9.1.2 write down the coordinates of the equation of g prime in the form y is equals to ax squared plus bx plus c so we actually need to determine g prime what are we given we are given the x intercepts c and d and then and now we have the coordinates of e so it should be quite obvious what we need to do right if you've been uh, doing these kind of questions this is a very basic question uh, you start doing this in grade 11 and you do it again in grade 12 well, let's take a look y is equal to a x minus x1 multiplied by x minus x2 this is one of the general forms of a parabola that we have where x1 is one of the x intercepts and x2 is one of the x intercepts so y is equal to a x minus so let's say the x coordinate c minus 2 so we're going to have x plus 2 multiplied by x and then the other coordinate the other x intercept is 6 so x minus 6 we want to find the value of a how can we do that we can substitute e because now we have the coordinates of e in doing that the y coordinate we have minus 4 being equal to a x plus 2 x is 0 so we just have 2 and then here we have minus 6 so minus 4 is equals to a multiplied by minus 12 a is equals to 1 over 3 that is the value of a so now we can substitute a back into this uh, equation we're gonna have y being equals to 1 over 3 x plus 2 multiplied by x minus 6 multiplication is commutative the order does not matter so let's multiply this bracket with this bracket first and then we're going to out multiply out by 1 over 3 so 1 over 3 x multiplied by x is x squared and then x minus 6x plus 2x minus 12 so y is equal to 1 over 3 x squared minus 4x minus 12 so y is equal to 1 over 3x squared minus 4 over 3x minus 4. Right, because we're going to get minus 12 divided by 3, which is minus 4. So here we go. This is 
g prime of x in the form y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c 9.1.2 let's take a look at 1.1.9.1.3 Write down the coordinates of write down the x coordinates of the turning point of G. So what do we know about the turning point in general? We know full well that the gradient at the turning point is equal to zero. And G prime of x is the function that gives us the gradient to G of x essentially. So here, where the function is zero, where G prime of x is zero, we know that we have the turning points because that's where the gradient of G of x is zero right so the intercepts of g prime is the gradient is where we have the turning points of g of x essentially so the x coordinates is that the only thing we're looking for yes x is equal to minus two or x is oh well not or but and right right so we have x equals to two and x is equal to six so there we go those are the two uh, solutions we have right because just you touch on it because g prime of x is the equation to the gradient of g of x and the gradient is zero at the turning point so that's why we're taking the x intercepts today because y is zero at the x intercept right so 9.1.3 9.1.4 Write down the x coordinate of the turning point of inflection of the graph of G. So the turning point, right, uh, the point of inflection rather, not the turning point, is symmetrical between the two turning points. So if we have uh, this turning, well, let me not rush. If we have this uh, function here, right, and then we would expect the point of inflection to be here, right? Uh, halfway through the two x intercepts so when we want to find the x coordinate at the point of inflection we can always say x1 plus x2 divided by 2 where x1 and x2 are the x coordinates of the turning points so we know that the turning points are at minus 2 and at 6 and we divide that by 2 and we get 2 so that is the answer to 9.1.4 is x is equal to 2 that is the x coordinate of the point of inflection or uh, point of inflection because it slides midway through the two turning points right 9.1.4 what about 9.1.5 explain why g has a local maximum at x is equal to minus 2 so apparently g has a local maximum at x is equal to minus 2 let's figure out why that is the case okay so take a look at this so from minus infinity to minus 2, the gradient of g of x is positive, right? As we can see that g prime of x lies above the x-axis. So it means that from minus infinity to minus 2, g of x looks something like that, right? So let me say that this right here is minus 2 we have x is equal to minus 2 here let me uh, just put uh, a set of axes for the sake of clarity instead so uh, this is our oh what am i doing this is our x axis and then here we have minus 2 here we have minus 2 here we have minus two right let me just uh okay let me just uh, draw this and then we're going to talk about it in a bit and then here we have um the other turning point is at six the other turning point is at six right oh well let me not write six there and write it there and just two dotted lines and then the point of inflection uh somewhere here um i don't want to put it at uh, zero because you don't know whether it's at zero or not but the point of inflection uh, of inflection is somewhere in between mm -hmm. uh, but let's just focus on those two points for the time being and see how we can uh, make sense of it so um this is the x-axis this is the x-axis right and why am i drawing my graph like this that's what i have to explain essentially 
Uh, okay, so take a look at this part. The gradient is positive there. The gradient is positive because g prime of x is above the x-axis. So we would expect g of x to look like this. It has to be going up to show that the gradient is positive. And then at minus 2, we have our turning point, and then the gradient becomes negative. So this is what we expect, right? The gradient is negative there because we are moving from minus infinity to positive infinity. We are moving in that direction. So we would expect that. And then at x equals to uh, 6, the gradient is 0. So we have another turning point. Well, we have another turning point here. And then after that, the gradient is positive. Hence, our graph is going up. Right, so uh, our cubic function looks something like this. So that is why the local maximum is at x is equal to minus 2. The local maximum is at x is equal to minus 2. But then how can we explain that? Well, you can sketch this graph. You can sketch this graph. That is one way of doing it. Maybe you can just add a few words there and there. You can see that when x is less than minus 2, g prime of x is greater than zero and when x is greater than minus two g prime of x is less than zero that explains what i was showing you essentially right so there we go that is 9.1.5 let's take a look at 9.1 oh well 9.2 we're almost done let's take a look so Given that h of x is equal to 4x to the 3 plus 5x, uh, substantiate whether it is possible to draw a tangent to the graph of h that has a negative gradient. So gradient, obviously, h prime of x. That's what I think when we talk about gradient. So this is 12x squared plus 5. So is it possible to draw a tangent to the graph that is a negative gradient essentially is it possible for these to be negative is it possible for these to be negative let's find out well five is a constant so we cannot uh, associate it with the negativity so to say so you know it's off the hook we just need to concentrate on 12 x squared 12 is positive we cannot associate it with any negativity and then let's talk about x squared can you substitute a number under x squared and get a negative answer well we can so essentially h prime of x will always be positive so we cannot draw a tangent with the negative gradient there we land 